Good morning everyone. Today I want to share with you the five biggest photography mistakes that we can make and how to fix them very easily. So if you're ready, let's get started. All right, guys, welcome to a new episode. Hope you're having a beautiful day. Over the past few days, I've been in Minneapolis and before that in Paris and New York City, and I've been shooting a lot and realized that, well, there is a lot of things we can improve on. If we want to get better at photography, if we want to be better photographers, there's always stuff we can work on. Also, if you don't know me, my name is Pierre T. Lambert. I'm a travel adventure photographer and the creator of the 30-day method to great photos. Next session is starting very soon. It's a step-by-step -step method to push your photography to the next level very easily. And having coached thousands of people around the world, what I realized is that the smallest actually changes you can make have the biggest impact. So today I want to share with you five mistakes that I still make sometimes, that a lot of my participants have made, and most importantly, that are easy to fix. So four of them are gonna be from me, and the last one is gonna be from the community on Instagram. I actually asked you guys on Instagram to share what is your biggest mistake. So make sure you stay tuned until the end, and let's get started. First mistake is actually shooting at body height only. What does it mean? It means that instead of getting creative and trying different angles, where we're gonna be low on the floor, or we're gonna be shooting from higher, or or maybe under our leg, we actually always stay static in the same position. We're gonna be shooting that, that all the time because we're kind of getting lazy. And what happens is that we always get the same kind of composition. And through my street photography and through my travel photography, I always really try to get low on the ground. I find that you get a different perspective or in some cases, I actually go up on elements to get a higher angle. And that really changes the composition you have. If you feel a little bored that you're always like kind of shooting the same thing around or that your photo turned out to be the same and you are like, I don't understand why they're not that much better. This could be a real indication that you're not changing, you're not being diverse enough in how you're gonna frame your shots. And Framing your shots, yes, happens in the camera, but it also happens in your body movement. So make sure you move a lot, that you get loads of ground, put your camera super low to a table, to an object. Use really all the elements around you, but use your body. Most importantly, that might be the best trick ever is using your body the best way. Second mistake is one I used to make a lot at the beginning. I was using UV filters. In what circumstances is that gonna be a mistake because it can become a little controversial? Let's get started. Let me know in the comments if you're using protection filters, meaning UV filters on top of your lenses or not. Because here, I got something to share with you guys. It is not optimal for several reasons. First of all, when you're gonna be using this filter and putting it in front of your expensive lens or really nice glass, what happens? Well, you're changing the optics in your lens, right? You're basically adding another element that wasn't created within the lens to your camera. What does it do? It can deteriorate the quality of your image. But most importantly, there is something that we call ghosting and flare, which we absolutely love. You might have seen it in the 2470 review where I was showing how different flares were happening between the V1 and the V2. And when you put a filter, a UV filter in front of your lens, you actually very often, if you shoot against the light or with the light hitting on the side, you are going to have the reflection of that element right here inside of your filter. So what is that gonna create? Well, it's gonna create a big problem because you'll literally see the glass here and the light inside here, which creates that, that weird artifact in your photos. And I don't think it looks that good. So we're trying to overprotect our equipment when we spend thousands or maybe hundreds of dollars on the lens that was built specifically to get the best quality. So putting a cheap filter on top of it or cheap glass is not helping. Now, there is always a caveat with that advice or that mistake is that in certain circumstances, let's say you're in the sand, in dust, in a cave, or you're shooting in the rain, then maybe, yes, you wanna use it to protect your front element. That can be a great idea. But in other cases, I really stopped using UV and protective filters in front of all my elements. And over the years, even though I drop lenses, etc., I might have had one problem where there was a tiny scratch on the lens and, and that, that's it. And that's over 10 years. So honestly, I don't think it's really worth it. 
but you'll see what we can do with those filters, especially if we break them. Did I just say break filters? Yes, I did, because mistake number three is going to be not using enough accessories. What does that even mean? Well, look, when you were shooting, we often start to get the same kind of shots. I do, and I kind of get bored. And suddenly I remember that I broke a filter recently and that I can actually use it to create different effects. So we were out there in the streets in Minneapolis and then the sun was beaming through and there was like cool lights at night. And I was like, oh, let's get this filter out and let's start playing and like shooting different kind of elements. So literally you put your broken filter or it could be a spoon, a piece of glass like I did for the Sony Xperia video and you just put it in front of your lens and you start playing and create different elements. What does it do when you add artifacts in your photos? Well, it helps draw the attention more towards your subject. It helps create something visual that's a little sparky and delicious and really, really bring your viewer into a different dimension on that image. And honestly, it's fun, you know? So here's a, some photos that we took at night with a parking sign. I was literally holding the filter under just like that to get a reflection of the parking sign in here. Plus uh, there was a little bit of diffraction and we took also some portraits during sunset and I put the filter on and look, it like kind of really added those like elements in that image with the sun hitting directly that broken filter. And I think honestly, it looks really cool. So you might be wondering, what's the fourth mistake? Well, to answer that question, I need you to leave a big thumbs up on that video. It's gonna make sparkles and I'm gonna start right now. Number four, it's shooting at too high ISO. Wow, that happens a lot. Let's say you're shooting in aperture priority or in S or in manual and your ISO are in auto. Suddenly you're getting inside a parking lot and you're shooting a spiral in a parking lot and you don't realize, that happens a lot, that your ISO is cranking up like crazy. It's, you're shooting suddenly at 2000 ISO and one 500 of a second and what does it do? Well, it's unnecessary unless you're shooting action and you really need to freeze that. You can actually play with the parameters. I'm gonna share with you exactly how. First step is go to manual. If you're in a control environment or if you're staying there for a few shots, turn your camera into manual and then bring your ISO lower to something that you think is comfortable and then change your shutter speed to something that can work. Let's say you're shooting a spiral in that garage well, 150 of the second is gonna be way more than enough. Why? Because there's no one moving, no action. So you can be static and you can shoot that properly with a low ISO. Now, let's say there was action, you might still need to be at 1 500 of a second. But honestly, in a lot of cases, we don't. We actually made a mistake when we were in French Polynesia with Jeremy where uh, we were shooting and we didn't realize we had a super strong ND filter to a daytime. And then when we shot photos, because we're doing videos at a high shutter speed, the ISO went to something crazy like ISO 13,000, which was totally unnecessary and kind of ruined the photo. But that happens, those are mistakes that you want to be paying attention to and that you can correct, you know? And now, ladies and gentlemen, number five is coming straight from you on Instagram. I asked the question, what are the biggest mistakes you make? And you guys answered. First of all, don't make the mistake of not participating in the next training the next 30 day adventure to great photos because it has helped over 2,500 students around the world. So please check the link in the description. The next session is gonna be starting soon. We're gonna be spending 30 days together to push your photography. Okay, number one, David is saying, I try not to over or under light my photos, which means he's struggling to get the right exposure. And this is a comment that came up a lot, over light, underexposure, not being able to set my ISO and exposure on an overcast day or strong sunny day. Absolutely, those are a little bit tricky. That's why you work with auto settings. But then when you see your ISO go crazy, well, then that's when you're changing it manually to get something. I always look at that little bar at the back to tell myself if the exposure is right or not. Uh, you can see the little exposure compensation graduation right there. Uh, that tells you plus or minus, and then it gives you an idea. Another one was white balance. Uh, not being able to work with the right white balance, but if you're shooting raw, you can get over that one very quickly. Oh, a really good one from Wash 
to photography was saying I have a bad habit of wanting to shoot wide open and I'm working to grow beyond that. Highly recommend you to watch that video that I made about why you should lower apertures, meaning f stops that are like f6, f8 and how it can help you and your photography. Because yes, we're all guilty. Ooh, we have a 1.2. We're gonna shoot everything at 1.2 or 2.8. Yes, it's creamy, but in many circumstances, for your story, for your storytelling, it might be better to be at f6 or f5.6. Forgetting the SD card and batteries, Justin, I feel you, we've all been there. Actually, there's a few people who say the biggest mistake was forgetting their SD card, and yeah, that really sucks when you get on the shoot. Forgetting to take the lens cap off, not having a camera, definitely probably a problem, but you're writing this on Instagram, so I take it that you can take photos on your phone. I got you. Beware of not using, not having a camera as an excuse not to shoot because our phones are really good nowadays. And then the Portuguese traveler is saying just shooting in manual, not shooting in ABTV and losing possible shots. Absolutely. I keep trying to preach everyone in AV and TV, which is S mode. Those modes, semi auto are amazing. They really help you focus on what you shoot and now the settings that you use. All right. Then we have Ben who is saying getting too close to subjects for composition and setup of cropping in pose. That can be a good one. Although I feel like most people that I've helped over the years actually get too far from the subject. And someone else was saying, I'm not leaving enough headroom on top of my subject. Or another one was saying, I'm leaving too much headroom. There's a fine balance between when I'm framing like that or when I have this much space. And it's very important to try to find that balance when you're uh, shooting. Anything that doesn't add to your photo, remember, get rid of it. We're trying to focus and tell a story the best way possible. And that's the most important. So now guys, I want you to let me know in the comments which one resonated the most with you. And remember, get out there, go shoot, try something different, try something new. I'll see you in the next episode.